Hey guys, I'm Kyle from studywebdevelopment.com. Today I want to talk to you about SEO and why I think it's a beneficial skill to have as a freelance developer. SEO is a big topic, so I'll only mention the nuggets in this video. Here is an overview of what I'll be discussing. The basics of SEO, on-page SEO, off-page SEO, and SEO benefits for web developers. Let's get started. If you have no idea about this topic, you probably have one or both of these questions right now. What is SEO and why should I learn SEO if I'm a web developer? It's a quick video with only 18 slides, but you will have a better understanding of the answers right at the end. So what is SEO? SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. In simple English, SEO is the process of creating or editing a website that Google can understand better and your ultimate goal is to rank number one for your search term. Google determines which is the best website page for your search result based on hundreds of factors. Think of SEO as a way of adapting the website for Google's algorithms to understand better. SEO can be split into two sections on-page SEO and off-page SEO. On-page SEO happens within the website. It refers to all of the activities and optimizing that you do on the website to improve the ranking in the search engine results. Off-page SEO happens outside of the website. It refers to all of the activities that you do for a website to rank high in the search engine results. The SERPs, otherwise known as search engine results page. Here is an image everyone would be familiar with. What you need to take note of here is what's called the page title, meta description and URL. As you can see from these results, some of them look more enticing than the other options here. These are things that are very easy to change and they often have a major SEO impact as well. Your goal is to make this relevant to what the person is searching for to increase the likelihood of them clicking on your search result or your client's search result. This is the page title which is what you see on the search results page. Here are a few points about creating page titles. Keep your page title between 50 to 60 characters in length. Your page title needs to change on every page. Where possible, try and use the search term you want to rank for right at the beginning of the title. Often just changing the page title alone can result in more clicks to the website which will help boost the position ranking that you currently see. In this case, if the current position number 2 updated their title to something like Best CSS Books for Beginners in 2018, I can guarantee that this will get them more clicks and they could be in position number 1 after a few months. The title needs to be relevant to the people who are doing the searches and it needs to explain what the page is about. If you want to learn how to create effective page titles, just do a Google search for page title tag examples and you'll see a few good articles on this. The meta description is only seen on the SERPs and also on social sharing previews. Meta descriptions are not a formal ranking factor for SEO but it's definitely a ranking factor for conversions. What I mean by this is that the page title and the meta description is what people read when they see your search result. If it's something that looks relevant and the website is in position 5 on the SERPs, you can still have a high chance of someone clicking on your result and not the result in position 3 or number 2 with a bad page title and a bad meta description. On a technical note, just keep your meta description between 140 to 150 characters in length and remember to change it on every single page. Make it relevant to the search term you want to rank for. It's important to create SEO friendly URLs. For beginners, this is the website link. Keep the URL as short as possible, but use the search term you want to rank for. In this case, best CSS books or best CSS books 2018 are very good options. 
Here's another example of a good example and a bad example. Remember that the URL needs to change and be relevant on every page. It's very easy just to name a URL a certain word or certain phrase, but try and be strategic about it when you're dealing with your client's website. When it comes to images, to help Google better understand the site, you need to name the images. To do this, all you need to do is give the image an alt tag and then you should rename it with SEO intentions in mind. An example of an alt tag name would be this. Web Development Ebook Free. Just remember to add the hyphens as this is an indication of space. As a side note, also remember to compress your images so that they load faster as this is becoming an important SEO ranking factor. H tags are headline tags that show Google more about the important sections of the page which will help it to become more relevant. An easy way to think of H tags would be just as bolded headlines that make sense on the page. Whether it's a short question, a subheading or a subcategory, you should generally only use H1 and H2 tags. H1 tags should be used only once on the page and are usually the same as the page title. H2 tags are usually for subheadings. I'll briefly go through the two best off-page SEO factors that aren't going to change anytime soon. Link building and social networking. Link building overall is the most important SEO ranking factor. Put simply, this is a link from another website to your website or article, which is basically a vote that shows Google your site is of value because you are getting votes from others. After all, who links to a website that sucks? People link out to valuable content and Google understands this fact. That said, a vote or link from a website like Forbes carries more weight than a brand new website that just started, let's say, two months ago. Link building can get a bit complicated, especially talking about things like link juice and no follows and things like that. But the main thing to remember is that it's more about quality than quantity when it comes to links. So let's say you had a website that talks about parrots. Would you like referral links from 10 other websites also talking about parrots? Or would you like links from 100 websites talking about Japanese flying squirrels? Another example would be my website. I talk about web design, development and freelancing. I'd want links from places like SitePoint, CSS Tricks and others in this particular niche. To get these links is something I'm not going to talk about here, but you can check out the resources at the end of this video for more on this topic. Social networking doesn't need an explanation, but it's important to be on social media and engage with your community, regardless of whether it's a client's website or your personal website. Even adding a free tool like sumo.com to web pages can incentivize a lot of people to share your pages if it's good enough. There are three important things when it comes to social networking. Post regularly, use images where possible, and be on the right platforms where the ideal target market is. Let's face it, freelancing, whether the goal is side income or full income, is not all rosy and perfect like some guys portray it to be. The truth is that if it were easy, everyone would be doing it right now. The bottom line is that freelancing for the most part does not provide a consistent, predictable monthly income like a full-time salary does. So what then is the solution to this? It's simple, a consistent, predictable income. So how can this be done? I'd recommend that you have an additional skill or service you can offer your existing clients or you need to have an additional skill that you can use to get new clients. That brings me to SEO. If you learn SEO for two hours a day for at least six months, I guarantee that you'll become a pro at SEO and you'll be able to confidently charge clients for the service and get good results for them. As I mentioned before, SEO is broken into two parts, on page and off page. You can earn money by offering improvements to on-page SEO, but where the consistent, predictable income comes in is with off-page SEO. I won't go into the specifics here,
but to sum it up, these are three things you could focus on. Building targeted backlinks or link building. You will be responsible for getting valuable links from other websites in the relevant niche of the business you are doing SEO for. Infographics. A great way to get links and social shares. If you don't know how to design this yourself, either learn how to design or outsource this task to others. Content. Either you will write articles or you can hire others to write articles. I know it may sound very simple, but don't overlook this. Many freelancers make full-time incomes just specializing on this alone. I know I briefly ran through these, but I just want to give you an overview. You can Google them further to go more in depth, or you can just check out the resources that I recommend at the end of this video. I'd like to end on this note. The chances are you'll be creating websites or apps for businesses. My question to you is, what is the main aim of the website that you are creating for them? In short, it will be to get the business more customers, which leads to more sales. So what is the next logical question after this? How to get the customers? Knowing SEO is a small step in the direction of helping clients solve this. Think different and remember that the greatest investment you can make is in yourself. In concluding, I want to clarify that there is a lot to discuss about this topic, but I want to only mention the main parts that apply to developers and freelancing. I recommend learning more at these excellent SEO resources, vibachill.com and backlinko.com. These were the places I learned and I highly recommend them. Thanks for watching this short video and I hope you found it valuable.